bedrock. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out. <laughs> I'm putting on a plastic bait ridge. Because it's a crayfish. God, it stinks to me. For some reason they seem to like it though. Kind of bizarre. Uh, well, it's really simple fishing. I'm just going to wade my rods out and place them by hand. You can just about see the bottom. Trying to find, here we go. Last year, I actually put a stick in to mark the end of the, um, the, end of the bar and lo and behold, I stuck it in the bottom, but <laughs> yeah, look, there it is. So I could wade out and um, and find the spot. So all I'm going to do is place two rods side by side with a little bit of bait over the top. <laughs> that was quite cool, wasn't it? I wasn't sure if I'd be able to see my um, my marker. I could have done them separately, really, but it's actually easier just to to do them both at the same time. So that's the first one. The advantage of waders. I'm not going to fill it in. I put a bucket in here a week ago. I just need enough to stop anything that's that's passing. Well, you can really feel when you come off it. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing, but in the yonder distance over there. Yeah, that's a pucker spot. I knew it was out here somewhere. <laughs> oh, there isn't a more accurate way to fish, is there? The old pigs going to slaughter rich. That was a nice spot, that rich. Took a little while to find because um, it's not very big. I remembered it being there, but you can't <laughs> ever remember exactly where sometimes in the dark. But yeah, it's about the size of your kitchen table. A little bit raised from the uh, the silt around it. So we've laid, laid a little uh, little feast down for them. All right, that's it. Three rods sorted. Fishing about as well as I can be fishing, I think. Let's get that kettle on. The res was the first place I ever fished as a child, as an 11 year old, and I fished it a little bit through my teenage years. For some reason it kind of fell off the radar though. Anyway, it was about five years ago I kind of got interested in it again and decided to get myself a ticket. Didn't really fish it the first couple of years, but last year I decided I was going to really make an effort and catch my first carp from there. What really interested me, apart from my historical connection with the res, was the carp that lived there. There's some really you know, awesome old creatures, not big ones, but interesting carp, 
a few nice scaly ones, a couple of big linears, big commons, even a couple of cool ghosties. So, you know, there was a variety of stock and we're talking pretty low stock as well. In around 60 acres, 40 or less fish, which by most people's standards, pretty difficult fishing. And the environment that they live in as well, uh, it's a big open water, uh, there's a lot of wind, there's a lot of bird life, there's a lot of crayfish, there's a lot of naturals, you know, so they don't really need our bait. The nature of the beast was going to make it a real challenge. Um, not that I was daunted, but sometimes you need something to get your teeth into, don't you? And it was very different to everything else I've got on my plate at the moment. Well, the swifts are screaming overhead. It's a sound that's quite evocative to me. Uh, my mum always tried to get them to nest in our old house and she played calls out of the window, swift calls. So yeah, it's kind of ingrained in my psyche. And they, they've arrived, it's the first day that they're here of spring. So I've actually texted her to let her know. It won't surprise anybody to know that I turned up late last night. I'm a bit of a night owl. And this kind of venue suits me, dropping in late for early morning bite time which we're sort of around about the back end of now. And sadly, I haven't had a bite on this occasion, but this is going to be an ongoing thing. And when I leave today, you know, I'm going to sit by a time out. Uh, when I leave today, I'll prep it again. Uh, yeah, but it's not the sort of place that I'm just going to sit. Um, I'd like to make better use of my time than that. So the sun's getting quite high now. I'm going to see it out for another hour. Um, before I leave, I'm going to have a little stroll around and I'm definitely going to bait up. Uh, and then we'll see what's next on the agenda. Fucking disgusting. I have reason to believe, Richard, that that is a human poo in a bag. Only an angler would do that, wouldn't they? Poo in a bag and throw it behind the swim. But would you pick it up? I always carry a black bag with me just for that reason. It can go in the bucket. Okay, because um, this spot's quite small, to save me messing about finding it, I'm actually just gonna walk back to the lead and uh, drop a little bit of bait on it as I pick the rig up. Perfect. Well, at least he wasn't touched by the craze. Uh, so I'm going to put a bit of bait out, but because the birds have been paying it a little bit of attention, I'm also going to actually tread it into the lake bed a little bit to make sure that even if uh, the birds get kind of most of the surface stuff, that there'll be a little bit of something there for the carp. Let's find the spot with my feet. At least I don't have to mess about looking for it now. Yeah, it's not big, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a real nice spot. Okay. Well, typically, I've come back to the car and on the back of the wind, in the shallow water in the sun, I found the fish bow waving about and I reckon probably most of the lake's population as well. I've counted about 15 different ones. So um, I've got a real quick opportunity to stalk one. They're in shallow water. I'm going to use the pole to sneak up on them and see if I can nick a quick bite. Fingers crossed. Minimal kit, in and out. In fact, I'm not even going to take all the pole. I just need a few sections just means that I don't have to walk right up to them. I'm going to take 10 sections, I reckon that'll be enough. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's a pucker spot. <laughs> uh, there isn't a more accurate way to fish, is there? 60 something acres and wasting your time anywhere else but here right now. That's a big fish just out here. Can't be any more on them than that, can you? He drops it right in amongst them. There's loads down here. I mean, it's, it's, it's tantalising. That's a 40 pounder all day long, that one. Come on, Ferber! 
He's very Trez unhappy. It's a good 30 pounder. Come on, don't fall off now. Do you know what? I was really feeling the pressure then. I don't normally. Oh, mate. It's come good though. That's a nice one. 